Hi, and welcome to our homework video for 17.2 enthalpy. And here we're continuing to look at energy involved in chemical reactions. Now, one question might be is how do you actually measure the heat energy that's exchanging in chemical reactions? And that's through something called calorimetry. And basically, calorimetry is based on the fact that the heat released by a system has to be equal to the heat absorbed by the surroundings. So if there's, you know, we have here in a liquid and if there's a chemical reaction taking place, the heat being released by the chemical reaction is going to transfer into the liquid and we can measure the temperature change of the liquid. And typically in a calorimeter, you're going to have some type of insulation. In this case, it's a styrofoam coffee cup to keep the heat from escaping into the rest of the surroundings, only because then it would be pretty much impossible to measure. All right. So once again, the basis of calorimetry is the heat released by a system has to be equal to the heat absorbed by the surroundings. Yeah. And the definition of enthalpy, it's a brand new word that I'm sure you've never heard before, has to do with the tendency to change to a state of lower energy. So just like when we talked about atoms and electrons and how electrons always want to be in the lowest possible energy level, so does pretty much everything else. And one of the main reasons why chemical reactions take place is things are trying to get to a state of lower energy energy. And this leads us to what's called a potential energy diagram. All right, so let's look at all of these different parts. And the first one, A, is the PE, the potential energy of the reactants. So whatever we're starting with in our chemical reaction, they're going to have some level of potential energy. Okay? And in order to get a chemical reaction <coughs> started, we have to put some energy in. Nothing comes for free here, right? So we have to put some energy in, and that's called the activation energy. So as we put energy in, it's going to absorb that energy, and that amount of energy it absorbs is called the activation energy. Making C, up here, the potential energy of the activated complex. Right? As the chemical reaction is taking place, things are kind of let's just say they're kind of like mishmash together in a way that we're never even going to really look at and we have this new potential energy of the activated complex and finally or not quite finally d down here is the potential energy of the products all right so let's say we look at our classic reaction right 2h2 plus o2 yields 2h2o here A would be the potential energy of our reactants here, right? D would be the potential energy of the products. B would be some sort of energy that we have to initially put in. And C would be the potential energy of this activated complex that takes place before we actually have our H2O. And finally, E is going to be delta H. If you remember, delta means change or change in, and H is heat. So delta H is the change in heat. Right. So the one you just saw, similar to this, is for an exothermic reaction. As you should remember, right? Exothermic means it gives off heat. And the delta H, our Q, okay, because delta H is going to be uh, heat, is going to be negative. All right. So in an exothermic reaction, right here we have the reactants, and the products are always going to be at a lower energy level 
than our reactants. Now the opposite is going to be endothermic. Okay, remember endothermic going to means it that it absorbs heat, and in this case our delta H is going to be positive. And we can see that the potential energy of the products is higher than the potential energy of the reactants. And you can see that this activation energy is significantly higher. It's like having to go up a really steep hill to get where you have to go. As opposed to in an exothermic reaction, we had to only go over a so-so kind of steep hill. Finally, a very important thing, you should kind of remember about catalysts from biology, right? especially when you learned about enzymes and whatnot. And a catalyst is going to help speed up the reaction because you need less energy to get started. Okay? So here's a normal chemical reaction. right? Here's our potential energy of the products. I'm sorry, here's our potential energy of the reactants. Here's our potential energy of the products. And normally, right, here's your activation energy. And in this diagram, it has it at 25 kilojoules. So you got to put in 25 kilojoules to get everything started. And you end up at the end of the day with a net of 15 kilojoules given off. When you use a catalyst, instead of having to put in 25 kilojoules, now we only have to put in 10 kilojoules. Okay, So instead of this fairly steep hill to get over to get things started, it's just like a little speed bump. So it's really going to help so that you have to put less energy to get your reaction going. All right, that one wasn't too bad, nice and short, but some really, really important stuff. Make sure that uh, if you missed anything, you go back have it all written down because there might be a surprise quiz in school this week. All right, see you guys in school.